All right. So All right. I, I would like to introduce got, you, Paul. So please. this is Paul Mahee. Of, um, he's the acupuncture lead of Alina Health Systems in Minnesota, and um, um, which is, is which is a large system. And he's going to talk with us a little bit about a really unique program they have going on with using telehealth in their inpatient setting. So sure. welcome, Paul. Thank you. So one of the first things, I guess, that makes this a little bit uh, a little unique to other systems is that we don't bill. We've never historically billed for any of our inpatient services. It's part of the just basic uh, bed fee uh, of the hospital is what, what actually funds us. And so it was a very early decision to shift from, uh, in during the pandemic, to shift from in-person care to telehealth care for all of our inpatient providers. Um, it was uh, a, a bit of a rocky start, I will admit, as we kind of built into this, sort of stepped into this program. Um, we're doing a lot of the same workflow that we did when we were doing stuff in person. So we're still getting referrals uh, from the nurses and the doctors on staff for their patients. Um, but the, the, the providers are calling from home. Uh, they have access to the patient room phone numbers and are uh, essentially having to do some cold calling. Um, and uh, uh, there's been obviously some challenges as they've kind of grown into this. Uh, the services that they're offering are much more of the, the same sort of thing that we're doing, I guess, is sort of across the nation, but we're not adding herbs into this in any way, shape, or form in the inpatient setting. Um, so it's a lot of self massage, self acupressure, um, a lot of mindfulness, um, a lot of just uh frankly doing reflective listening and being a uh, uh uh a present presence for the patients um who are essentially all locked down and not able to get any other visitors so um so it's it's going it's been going now for about um about a month sort of rolling pretty well um we're beginning to look at there's a few of our units that have uh essentially an iPad on a cart that they're starting to roll into patients' rooms. Um, we're looking at getting involved in that program so that they can actually get a, a video call uh, into these, uh, into the, the hospital rooms. Um, but the, the workflow has been very, like I said, very similar to what we were doing before. We're sort of identifying the same patients that we would have seen previously. We're still getting referrals from uh, oncology and and our hospital's uh, uh, pain group, which is sort of what's our, our original sources of uh, of referrals, um, and we're just you know they're having to call multiple times to get in sometimes to to visit with a patient, um, but it's relatively similar to the workflow when they're just trying to get into the room and there's other people in the room. Uh, with these particular patients. So what questions do you guys have? I mean, I know that that seems like it's kind of a high level description of what we're doing, but. Uh, this is Julie. I think what's one thing yeah. that's really interesting about this concept is mm -hmm. as opposed to figuring out how to care for patients that have already mm -hmm. been used to your acupuncture services in person, mm -hmm. the, you probably are seeing a lot of regular new patients, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not as if they, Right. Three weeks ago, we're having regular acupuncture, and now you're trying to replace it with telehealth. This is right. your first contact with a patient offering mm -hmm. them telehealth mm -hmm. acupuncture, which I think is an easier way to um, to introduce it to a patient. Sometimes, absolutely, yeah. And it's uh, uh, you know, obviously we've got the best uh, success rates with those units where the nursing staff is all very much on board, and they sometimes do some of the sort of preliminary sales for us um but uh uh yeah it's it's uh the the patients will the providers will call up say hi this is who i am i'm a provider with a facility um normally i would do blank blank and blank but now in this time of covid we're doing uh we're trying to to we're trying to provide care in a slightly different manner and that's sort of their usual segue into it 
And a lot of the phone calls are going obviously much faster uh, than a full out session would go. Um, often it's uh, maybe five to 10 minutes, but there are still instances where they're getting a good 30 to 40 minute visit in with these patients and the patients are, are very much in need of these kind of uh, mindfulness, calming, recentering uh, services that we've done for years. So. What is the training that the acupuncture providers have in mindfulness or these mind-body techniques? Is it just mostly what they've learned through their typical acupuncture training, or do they have some additional Most of training? them have some additional training. So we've, we've had, uh, this is a long-standing, so this is a very long-standing program. We've been doing inpatient services at, these, at this hospital for about 16 years now. And um, a lot of them have additional training, very specifically in mindfulness techniques. Um, Henry Emmons used to be part of our team at Penny George. I don't know if you recognize that name. Um, he, uh, he actually developed a lot of our, what we would call our transformative nurse training program, um, which uh, was teaching basic mindfulness and aromatherapy to the nursing staff at the hospitals. Um, as part of our way of kind of uh, infiltrating the system. Um, so most of our people have, I guess, more extensive training and mindfulness than, than most of us do coming out of acupuncture school. And are, you do, um, are they still doing any aromatherapy right now? A little. Um, the, the thing that we're, we are doing it when we feel it's a necessary thing and when we've got a really good relationship with the nursing staff on that particular unit, um, largely because since we're not there to, uh, to deliver the little inhalers or the, uh, the, any of the aromatherapy deliverables, um, that becomes an additional task for the nurses. And so we're, we're being, we are still doing that, but we're being, um, I guess, mindful of not overburdening the nursing staff when everyone else is switching to telehealth too. Right. Can I ask Do what, you, the, oh, go ahead. what the platform that you use is? I know our music therapy is mm -hmm. all inpatient and they converted to telehealth and yeah. they had like three tiers. Like if the patient had a computer in the room, they would use a computer. If they had a cell phone, that was next best. Yeah. If they had a landline, then that was used. We are at the moment only doing landline. Okay. Um, and getting still pretty good results. Um, we're looking at, uh, like I said, we're looking at dovetailing in with another program, which is a little more of like a virtual visit as opposed to a telephone call. Um, but that's, that's in very early days, and I don't know where that will go yet. So, but yes, very, very low tech. Are you taking any metrics to see outcomes? Uh, Yes, uh, they're they're doing their typical before and after pain, anxiety, nausea, and coping scores, uh, scales of zero to ten. Well, I like it. Yeah. What type of aromatherapy do you use? Do you use the the tab? I can't remember what that company is called that has the hospital tab ones that you just peel and. Okay. We, we use a little bit of those, and I don't remember the name of the vendor either. Um, we also have little, they look like almost little chapstick things, um, and mm -hmm. we call those inhalers. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, I think um, that's by the same company, actually. Yeah. I think yeah. they do both. And, and they've, uh, we've been using those for probably 12 to 14 years now. It was one of the first things that we got involved with in the hospitals. It was an easy sell in the hospital. And so we actually have those on almost all the nursing stations. Um, it's something that the nurses, if they go through a, uh, uh, they go through a little online education that we've developed for them, they, they're allowed to sort of uh, prescribe them. Um, and so they're pretty well, uh, they're pretty well stocked around the system. Great, thank you, Paul. Yeah. That was yeah. really insightful. Um, the, that whole program. So it's low tech, but you're yeah, providing a lot of resources for people who um, otherwise are very isolated generally, yeah. but especially during the pandemic. Absolutely. All right. Do you guys have any other questions for him? Nope. No, thank Thanks, you. Paul. Yeah. All right. Thank you. 
thank you very much, paul.